Hey there. Uh, last time we did a video on how to sample from a probability distribution based on a histogram. We looked at uh, stock market data, specifically SPX, and I wanted to return to that and do a quick video uh, on another technique, on another way of doing the same thing. Now this is not something I'm super familiar with. I've only played around with it once and it was years and years ago. Uh, so again, I'm not super uh, comfortable with it. So if there are any mistakes in there, I apologize in advance, uh, but there are a couple ways to do this in Python, several ways in fact. Um, SciPy has a module uh, for kernel density est estimation, it's limited only to Gaussian kernels. Uh, Scikit-learn has one, as does the stats model uh, package. So we're just going to look at SciPy and um, also briefly at the Scikit-learn Scikit -learn variant. This should end up being a pretty quick video because I just want to do a very quick uh, cursory overview of these packages and the capabilities um, that they have. So uh, let's just get started by talking about what kernel density estimation is and go to the Wikipedia article and just very briefly talk about it before moving on to, uh, to actual coding. So this is the Wikipedia article on kernel density estimation and I will leave a link to this in the description uh, below. But the gist of it is this. We are going to approximate our distribution as a sum of what they call kernel functions. That's kind of been normalized to the number of number of data points and that includes this smoothing parameter. And the code um, will adjust the smoothing parameter H, which is also called the bandwidth, uh, such that it essentially minimizes the square error and at least squares a sort of way. And that's kind of described down later in the article. Um, here, this is kind of akin to a least squares minimization. Um, however, the issue here is that this function that it's trying to minimize against uh, is unknown. And this is where I haven't really gone into great depth at trying to pull apart the documentation and looking at the underlying code about how, the, um, how this is actually done. Um, so yeah, and uh, there are a variety of these kernel functions you can use. We're just going to use Gaussian, and again, you can read this article and get more more information on it. But I just wanted to uh, give that that caveat that I'm really not sure how this optimization is done before we go on to um, the actual notebook. So uh, now that I've said all of that, let's go to the notebook. So in the interest of time, I've already uh, done the imports here. We're just going to use pandas again, numpy, obviously, matplotlib, and the two uh, kernel density estimation uh, routines we're going to pull in from SciPy, just called Gaussian um, KDE, and then from scikit-learn, the kernel density function. So let's run that. I've also done the import here of the SPX data and truncated it to uh, 1990 to present. And this was the, the histogram that we have done in uh, previous, previous videos. So the calls to these are basically, they're just simple uh, function calls. So right off the bat, let's just uh, do it with the, uh, the SciPy function here. So I'm gonna call this SciPy kernel. And that's gonna be equal to Let's uh, spell that right. Equal to what? It's equal to Gaussian kernel. Uh, actually, it's Gaussian KDE, isn't it? Kernel density estimation. And we just have to pass in our data, which is PCT, our percent change uh, NumPy vector. So let's run that, make sure it's good. Seems OK. And this will return an object. Let's actually print out uh, print type SciPy kernel. So it prints out uh, uh, an object type. It returns an object type of this. So this has member functions and various attributes. And so we could just call this function to actually get, uh, uh, we can make use of the member function, the various properties of this object to get back things that we need. So let's actually evaluate this and kind of plot out what it looks like. So our histogram goes from roughly from minus 0.1 to 0.1. So let's come down here and we will go u is equal to np.lin space minus 0.1 up to 0 0.1. And let's just do, I don't know, 500 points. 500, not 5,000. And we will create a variable called, just for plotting purposes called y. Let's actually call it v since we used uh, u. So u and v is going to be equal to psi pi uh, kernel. And we're going to call the member function evaluate. 
and we want to evaluate this at u. So let's do that. Does this run? No, it doesn't. What did I do wrong? Um, that should be 0.1. Is that the issue? Apparently that's the issue. Okay, so let's plot this and see what it looks like. So let's come down here. plt.plot u comma v and a black line. And let's overlay or let's overlay this on top of the uh, the histogram. So let me come up here. Let me copy this entire thing. Uh, come in here. Paste it and run it. So that looks pretty good. Let's actually scale this x axis down a little bit. Let's go plt.xlim. Let's go, um, I don't know, minus minus um, minus 0 0.3 to 0.3. So it looks like we have a reasonable uh, estimation of the density here. Let's actually just make this maybe 0.5 or 5%. 5, 5. Cool. Another thing we can do uh, is sample from this distribution uh, directly. So we can go sample and we can call the function, uh, the member function, return, uh, I'm sorry, resamples. And um, so we come down here and we can do uh, scipy kernel, scipy kernel dot resamples. And we can enter in a size. So let's just do uh, 5,000 points. Let's see if that runs. Nope. Does help to spell samples correctly, doesn't it? Samples. Run. And it's resample. There we go. So uh, let's just do a quick histogram. Let's just go uh, count bins patches equal plt.hist samples. Uh, let's do, I don't know bins equal 100 again and we'll do the edge color um, uh, edge color equals black uh, sample uh, I stopped the recording and off screen I added this uh, subscript 0 here I forgot that the uh, sam the resample command returns an array of arrays so it's the first element of that array which it's 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 only a it's effectively a two-dimensional array in, in SciPy or NumPy nomenclature, but it's a, it's essentially a one-dimensional array. So I just had to specify that to get the histogram. And we got something that looks very much like our original set of data here. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So, okay, I want to just move on and do something quickly. Um, before that, I actually want to go up here. Where do I do, uh, uh, yeah, here. Where do I actually do the samples? or not the samples, the uh, the actual calling of the function. So up here I want to go and I have a variable called bw for bandwidth and that is going to be equal to scipy kernel dot factor and I want to multiply that times np dot std for standard deviation of our actual raw data, percent change. Let me just see if that runs. Nope. Um, Oh, I don't think this is the function call, actually. It's a uh, just a uh, member attribute. And let's just print out that number. So this is the bandwidth. This is that smoothing parameter, that H in the Wikipedia article. So print bandwidth. Okay, there it is. So let's keep that in mind. So down here, I just want to play around a bit with the scikit-learn function. So let's just create a uh, variable called scikit kernel. And that is going to be equal to kernel density, I think is the name of the function. Let me see what uh, what it is. Kernel density. Kernel density. And uh, we need to pass in some uh, arguments to this function. And that is the kernel type. So kernel, actually while I'm thinking about this, I believe this is a capital K. So capital K. Let's go back here. Uh, and this is going to be equal to our Gaussian, so Gauss, uh, Gaussian. And then uh, this takes another uh, function called fit, and then we pass in our variable PCT. So let's see if that runs. Of course it doesn't. What's the issue? Uh, 
Oh yeah, I forgot. This uh, is an odd quirk of this particular uh, thing. This needs to be a two-dimensional array, so we just need to reshape that PCT. So PCT.shape is going to be equal to uh, PCT.size, comma, one. So that should do it. There we go. So let's actually sample from this distribution. I don't know how to do an evaluation kind of like we did up here, but uh, we could definitely sample from it and see what we get. So similar, similarly to above, uh, what cell do I want to do this in? Let's just do it uh, here. We'll create a variable variable called sample again, and it's just scikit kernel dot sample. And then we will do a certain number. Let's do 5,000 again, see if that runs. Seems to, so let's just do a histogram of that. So let's go again, count, bins, patches. Oops, I don't need a comma. plt.hist. Um, our variable is sample. Uh, bins equal 100. Edge color is equal to true. And let us, uh, not true, um, black. And let us also do uh, a density equals true. I don't think I did that above, but I should do it here. Density is equal to true. Okay, that looks obviously very different than um, what's going on here. And the reason is uh, the bandwidth is not set and by default it, it goes to one. So if we come up here and we add in some sort of variable, uh, not variable, we pass in an argument bandwidth Let's just run it again. You get something similar. Of course, the outlier terms shift the uh, shift the, the where the, uh, the the axis bounds. So obviously, this is very sensitive to that smoothing parameter. And as far as I know, the scikit learn package does not uh, figure that out for you. But it does have the advantage of um, being able to to select the particular kernel. So in this case, Gaussian. But you could do other other types of kernels as needed. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, the stats models package also has this ability, and I don't know uh, how it works with the smoothing parameters, but um, yeah, I just wanted to do this quick video and give you basically a taste of this functionality. And as I said in the intro, uh, I'm not really sure about how this optimization, the optimization part of this works, but I'm going to read up on it a little bit, and if there's anything particularly uh, noteworthy, I will do another video on that. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be uh, it for this time. And, and I'm going to clean up this uh, notebook and uh, post it on GitHub. And then until next time, see ya.